Welcome to the Beyond the Basics guide for the Nikon D810. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. The D810 is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this instructional guide. Please note that this guide does not cover many of the more basic features and functions of the D810 as those topics are discussed at length in our original guide. Rather, this guide will help you move forward with your knowledge of your camera to help you take the best pictures possible. Your D810 has many buttons and dials and features that are fully customizable. By customizing the functions of your camera, you'll be able to access your most frequently used settings and make your camera even more intuitive. Making changes to the functions of the customizable buttons is done in the camera's menu system under the Custom Setting menu. Here, select Menu F, Controls. With this menu, you can select many different buttons and controls to customize to your liking. Let's take a look at each of these options now. First, there is the LCD illumination switch setting. Here, you can choose what you'd like the camera to do when you rotate the power switch to the LCD illumination icon. The first and default setting is LCD backlight, which will simply illuminate the LCD panel. The other option is LCD backlight and information display, which will illuminate the LCD panel as well as activate the information display. The next customizable control is the multi-selector center button with three options, including shooting mode, playback mode, and live view. In shooting mode, you can choose to have the center multi-selector button either select the center focus point select the preset focus point, highlight the active focus point, or none, which will disable the button's function in the camera shooting modes. To select a focus point for the preset focus point option, select the focus point you'd like and press and hold the AF mode button. While the AF mode button is held down, press the center multi-selector button. The AF point will blink in the viewfinder. You can also choose the function of the multi-selector center button in the camera's playback mode. First, you can choose thumbnail on off, which will toggle the view between full frame and thumbnail playback. Next, you can choose view histograms, which will display a histogram in both thumbnail and full frame playback when the multi-selector center button is held down. The next option for the multi-selector center button in playback mode is zoom on off. When this option is selected, pressing the multi-selector center button will allow you to toggle between thumbnail or full frame playback and playback zoom. You can choose the initial level of magnification that you'd like when the button is pressed. The last option for the multi-selector center button in playback mode is choose slot and folder, which will display the card slot folder dialog when the button is pressed so you can quickly select the memory card and folder you'd like to playback images from. The last mode that you can customize the multi-selector center button is Live View. Here you can choose from three different options. First, you can choose to have the button select the center focus point, which will simply reset the focus point to the center position in Live View. Next, you can choose Zoom On Off. With Zoom On Off selected, Pressing the multi-selector center button will display a magnified view of the live view scene so you can check for good focus. The last option is none, which will disable the button's function in live view mode. The next customizable control on the D810 is the multi-selector with two settings. First, there is restart standby timer. When this option is selected, you can press the multi-selector to activate the exposure meters after they have turned off. The other option is do nothing, which will not activate the exposure meters when the multi-selector is pressed. The next button that can be customized is the function button. You can customize the button itself as well as the way the button operates in conjunction with the command dials. First, let's look at the options for customizing the role played by the function button. 
You can choose from almost 20 different options. First, you can choose Preview. When this option is selected, pressing and holding the function button will allow you to preview the depth of field with your current aperture setting. The next option is FV Lock, which will allow you to press the function button to lock the flash value for the built-in and compatible external flash units. If you select this option, you can press the function button once to lock the flash output, and then press the button again to release the flash value lock. The next option is the AEAF lock. When selected, the AEAF lock setting will allow you to press and hold the function button to lock the exposure and focus until the shutter button is pressed completely. AE lock only will allow you to press and hold the function button to lock just the exposure setting. The next option, AE lock reset on release, will lock the exposure when the function button is pressed and the exposure will remain locked until the button is pressed again or until the shutter button is pressed. Next, there is AE lock hold. With this setting, the exposure will be locked when the function button is pressed and it will remain locked until the function button is pressed again. The AF lock only option will set the function button to lock the focus while the button is held down. Next, there is the AF on setting. When AF on is selected, pressing the function button will activate the camera's auto focus just like pressing the shutter button halfway or pressing the AF on button. The Enable Disable Flash option will allow you to press and hold the function button to temporarily enable or disable the flash. The next option is Bracketing Burst. This is a useful option if you use the camera's bracketing feature often. Normally with the D810, you must have the camera set to one of the continuous drive modes if you want the camera to take pictures continuously while the shutter button is held down. With the bracketing burst option, you can take a continuous series of bracketed shots with the camera in the single frame or quiet release modes. You simply need to press and hold the function button while you're pressing the shutter button, and the camera will continuously take the specified number of bracketed shots. Next, there is plus NEF RAW. You can use this option if you're shooting in JPEG or TIFF and you'd like to shoot just a few RAW images. Simply press the function button and then take the picture as you normally would. After the picture has been taken, the camera will resume using the JPEG only setting. If you want to take a series of plus raw images, keep the shutter button pressed halfway between shots. Note that when the camera is shooting a plus raw image, raw will be displayed on the control panel. The next four options, matrix metering, center weighted metering, spot metering, and highlight weighted metering, will activate the respective metering mode while the function button is pressed. The next option for customizing the function button is Viewfinder Grid Display, which will allow you to press the function button to turn the viewfinder framing grid on or off. Next, there is Viewfinder Virtual Horizon. With this option, you can view a virtual horizon display in the viewfinder, which will help you ensure that the camera is level side to side and in the forward-backward positions. To return to the regular viewfinder display, simply press the function button again. The next two options, Disable Synchronized Release and Remote Release Only, are for use when multiple cameras are being synchronized with the D810. Disable Synchronized Release will allow you to press and hold the function button to temporarily disable the shutters on the remote cameras. Remote Release Only will allow you to press and hold the function button in conjunction with the shutter button to release the shutters on the remote cameras only. The next option, My Menu, will allow you to press the function button to instantly access the camera's My Menu. The next option is Access Top Item in My Menu, which will allow you to instantly access the top menu item in the camera's My Menu. The next option for customizing the function button is Playback. When selected, the Playback option will allow you to enter the camera's playback mode by pressing the function button. This is useful for times when it may be difficult to access the playback button with your left hand. The final option for customizing the function button is None. When this option is selected, pressing the function button will have no effect.
Now that we've discussed each of the options for customizing the function button when it's pressed, let's take a look at the options for customizing the function button in conjunction with the command dials. There are six different options. The first option is choose image area. With this setting, you can press and hold the function button while rotating either of the command dials to select the image area. As you rotate the command dial, you will see a series of numbers displayed on the control panel. 3624 represents FX format with images recorded using the full area of the image sensor. 3020 represents a slightly smaller format with images being recorded using approximately 30 by 20 millimeters of the image sensor at the center. 2416 represents the DX format with images recorded using approximately 24 by 16 millimeters of the image sensor at the center. 30 by 24 represents a format slightly smaller than the FX format, but in a 5-4 aspect ratio. Images will be recorded using 30 by 24 millimeters of the image sensor at the center. The next option for customizing the function button with the command dials is shutter speed and aperture lock. With this option, you can lock the shutter speed at the currently selected value in the shutter priority and manual modes. You can lock the aperture at the currently selected value in the aperture priority and manual modes. To lock the shutter speed, simply press and hold the function button and rotate the main command dial. A small L icon will appear next to the shutter speed on the control panel. To lock the aperture, press and hold the function button while rotating the sub command dial. The next option is one step speed aperture. By default, your camera is set to use one-third steps for changing exposure. With the one-step speed aperture setting, you can press and hold the function button while rotating either of the command dials to change the aperture or shutter speed by one full exposure step. Next, there is the Choose Non-CPU Lens Number option. With this option, you can use the function button in conjunction with the command dials to set a lens number for a non-CPU lens. The next option is active delighting. When this option is selected, you'll be able to press and hold the function button while rotating either of the command dials to adjust the active delighting setting. Next, there is exposure delay mode. When this option is selected, you can press the function button while rotating either of the command dials to choose the length of delay between the time the shutter button is pressed and the picture is taken. You can choose no delay, or you can choose one, two, or three seconds. The final option is none. When this option is selected, pressing the function button while rotating the command dials will have no effect. In addition to the function button, you can also customize the role of the preview button. Almost all of the options for the preview button are the same as the options that are available for customizing the function button. You can also customize the role of the AEL-AFL button. Again, the options for customizing the role of this button are the same as the options for the function button, with a few exceptions. For the AEL-AFL button, the one-step speed aperture and active delighting options are not available. The next option that you can customize is the shutter speed and aperture lock. With this setting, you can lock the shutter speed and or aperture at the currently selected setting. Note that the shutter speed can be locked only in the camera's shutter priority and manual modes, and the aperture can be locked only in the camera's aperture priority and manual modes. The next button that you can customize is the bracket button. There are three different options for customizing the role of this button. First, you can select auto bracketing. With this option, when the bracket button is pressed and held down while the command dials are being rotated, you can select the bracketing increments and number of shots. The next option for customizing this button is the multiple exposure option. If you select multiple exposure, you can press and hold the bracket button while rotating the command dials to set the mode and number of shots for multiple exposure images. The last option for the bracket button is HDR or high dynamic range. With the HDR option, you can press and hold the bracket button while rotating the command dials to select the mode and exposure differential for HDR photos.
The next controls that you can customize are the command dials. You select one of four different options. The first option is reverse rotation, which will allow you to reverse the direction that you rotate the command dials when you're making changes to the exposure compensation and shutter speed aperture settings. To use this option, select the setting or settings you'd like and press OK. The next option for customizing the command dials is change main sub. With this option, you can reverse the roles of the main and sub command dials for exposure and autofocus. For exposure, if off is selected, the default settings of main command dial, shutter speed, and sub command dial aperture will be used. If on is selected, the roles of the command dials will be reversed, and the main command dial will control the aperture and the sub command dial will control the shutter speed. For autofocus, the off setting means that the main command dial in conjunction with the AF mode button will control the AF mode and the sub command dial will control the AF area mode. If on is selected, the main command dial will control the AF area mode and the sub command dial will control the AF mode. The next option is aperture setting, which allows you to select how you'd like to be able to adjust the aperture setting. If sub command dial is selected, the aperture can be selected only using the sub command dial. If aperture ring is selected, you can select the aperture only with the aperture ring that is available on specific lenses. If your lens does not have an aperture ring, aperture will be adjusted with the sub command dial regardless of the option that is selected. The next option for customizing the command dials is menus and playback. There are three options for this setting. You can select off, which will mean that the command dials will have no effect on accessing the menus and playback. If either of the other two options, on or on image review excluded, are selected, the command dials can be used to navigate through images in playback and to navigate the menu system. If you want to prevent the command dials from scrolling through images during image review, you'll want to select on image review excluded. The final option for customizing the command dials is Subdial Frame Advance with options for 10 frames, 50 frames, and folder. With this option, you can choose to be able to rotate the sub command dial in the playback mode to quickly advance 10 frames, 50 frames, or you can change the playback folder. The next control to customize is Release Button to Use Dial where you can select either yes or no. This option applies to the mode button, the exposure compensation button, the ISO button, the quality button, the white balance button, flash compensation button, the bracket button, and the AF mode button. If you select yes, you can press and release the button, then rotate the main or sub command dial to make changes. If you select no, which is the default option, you will need to press and hold the button while you're rotating the command dials to make adjustments. The next option that you can customize on the D810 is Slot Empty Release Lock. With this option, you can choose what you would like the camera to do when there is no memory card inserted. If you choose Enable Release, you will be able to press the shutter button to release the shutter even if there's no memory card in the camera. If you select Release Locked, the camera will disable the shutter button if a memory card is not inserted in the camera. The next option that can be customized is Reverse Indicators. With this option, you can reverse the direction of the exposure indicators in the control panel, viewfinder, and information display. The next option is Assign Movie Record Button. With this option, you can customize the role of the Movie Record Button during still shooting. With each of the options, you will need to press and hold the Movie Record Button while rotating the main or sub command dials to make your selection. You can choose to have the Movie Record Button access the white balance, ISO, image area, or shutter speed and aperture lock. You can also choose the default option, None, which will disable the movie record button during still shooting. The next button that can be customized is the live view button. You can choose to enable or disable the button. 
Select Disable if you would like to prevent the button from accidentally starting LiveView. The next option for customizing your D810 in still shooting modes is Assign MB D12 AF On. This setting will allow you to select the function of the AF On button that is on an optional battery pack for this camera. Many of the options that you can choose are the same as the options that are available for the camera's function button. The next control that can be customized is the function button on the optional wireless remote. You can choose from many of the same options that are available for the function button on the camera body. The only option that is unique to the function button on the wireless remote is Live View. When Live View is selected, pressing the function button on the remote will start and end Live View shooting. The last buttons that can be customized are the function buttons that are on certain Nikon lenses. You can choose from many of the same options that are available for the function button on the camera body. Although it's reasonably easy and efficient to use the camera's menu system to format the memory card, there is an even faster way to do this. Press and hold the delete button and the mode button at the same time. The word format, the number of shots remaining, and the card slot will flash on the information display and control panel. To change the card that will be formatted, rotate the main command dial. Press both buttons a second time to confirm that you would like to format the card. Another handy feature is the ability to use the quality and exposure compensation buttons to perform a two button reset. This reset will restore the camera to the default settings. Simply press and hold these two buttons at the same time for more than two seconds. The information display and control panel will blink. Bracketing is a technique that allows photographers to take several versions of the same photo, but with different settings. When exposure is bracketed using three images, one of the photos will be properly exposed, one will be slightly overexposed, and one will be slightly underexposed. Then you will have the ability to choose the best of the three images, or use photo editing software to combine the three shots, giving the image a broad range of highlights and shadows that are all properly exposed. This technique is often called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. Professional photographers have used bracketing since the days of film to ensure good exposure on important shots. With digital cameras today, bracketing options are available not only for exposure, but for flash level, white balance, and with the D810, even active delighting. First, let's look at how to configure the camera for exposure bracketing. The first thing that you'll need to do is set the release mode. When you're using one of the continuous release modes, you'll need to press and hold the shutter button to record the number of frames you'd like. In the self-timer release mode, you can set the number of shots to be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. To do this, navigate to the Custom Settings menu and select Timers AE Lock. Then select Self-Timer. Here, you can choose to have the camera take between one and nine shots each time the shutter button is pressed. For the other release modes, one shot will be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. To adjust the number of frames per second in the continuous low speed release mode, navigate to the custom settings menu, then shooting display. Scroll to D2 CL mode shooting speed and select the number of frames per second. The next step to configure the camera for exposure bracketing is to select what type of bracketing you'd like from the menu system. To do this, navigate to the Custom Settings menu and choose E, Bracketing and Flash. Then select E6, Auto Bracketing Set. From here, you can choose from AE or Auto Exposure and Flash, AE Only, Flash Only, White Balance, and Active Delighting. We'll choose AE Only. Now, we can press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the sub-command dial to select bracketing increment, or the amount of variation we'd like to see in each of the shots. 
Variations are set in increments between 0.3 and 3. The larger the number, the more variation in exposure there will be. If you select a smaller increment, like 0.3, the images will have less variation. After we've chosen the bracketing increment, we'll need to choose the number of shots. To do this, press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the main command dial. You can choose to have 0, 3, 5, 7, or 9 bracketed shots. You can also choose minus 2, plus 2, minus 3, or plus 3. If you choose to have three frames, one will be standard exposure, one will be underexposed, and one will be overexposed. You can also choose five, seven, or nine shots to be bracketed. If you select one of these options, the first shot will have the standard exposure setting. Then, depending on the number of frames you have selected, there will be two, three, or four underexposed shots, and two, three, or four overexposed shots. The other frame options for bracketing are plus and minus two and three. If minus two is selected, two shots will be bracketed, with one being the standard exposure, and the other will be underexposed. If plus two is selected, again, two shots will be taken, but this time one will be standard and the other will be overexposed. With the plus and minus three frames options, the first shot will be the standard exposure, the next one will be slightly over or underexposed, and the next shot will be more over or underexposed. Now, all we need to do is take some pictures. As always, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since we're using a continuous release mode, we'll hold the shutter button down to record the bracketed images. Now that we've experimented with exposure bracketing, let's look at the flash level bracketing feature. Although using flash bracketing is very similar to exposure bracketing, there are a few settings that we'll need to change. First, since we're using the flash, we'll change the release mode from continuous to single frame. Next, we'll need to change the bracketing set from auto exposure only to auto exposure and flash or flash only. Again, this is in the menu system under the custom settings menu. Bracketing and Flash, and Auto Bracketing Set. This time, we'll choose Flash Only. Note that if you choose AE and Flash, you can bracket the exposure level combined with the flash level. The next thing we'll need to verify is that the flash is set to the TTL control. This setting is also located in the Custom Settings menu under Bracketing and Flash. Select Flash Control for built-in flash and choose TTL. With the TTL flash control, the flash output is automatically adjusted. The other three flash options, manual, repeating, and commander mode, will not produce accurate results when bracketing. Now, all that we need to do is set the number of frames to be bracketed, as well as the increment that we'd like. Again, we'll just press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the main and sub command dials. Rotating the main command dial selects the number of frames, and the sub command dial selects the increment. Finally, we'll take some pictures. As always, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. In the single release mode, we'll need to press the shutter button three times to take three separate bracketed shots. With the Nikon D810, white balance can also be bracketed. Doing this will allow greater control over the color of images, particularly in tricky lighting situations. To set the bracketing set to white balance, we'll return to the custom settings menu, bracketing in flash, auto bracketing set, and we'll select white balance bracketing. We'll have best results if an appropriate white balance setting has been selected or if a custom white balance has been taken. When white balance is bracketed, only one picture needs to be taken, and the camera will automatically generate the bracketed copies of the image. For white balance, there are several options for the number of frames to be bracketed. The first option is three frames. With this option, the first frame is the standard white balance. The second frame will have increased amber tones, and the last frame will have increased blue tones. You can also choose five, seven, or nine shots to be bracketed. If you select one of these options, the first shot will have the standard exposure setting. Then, depending on the number of frames you have selected, there will be two, three, or four shots with increased amber and two, three, or four shots with increased blue.
In addition to bracketing, exposure, flash, and white balance, the Nikon D810 also allows you to bracket the active delighting. Active delighting is a feature on many newer Nikon digital SLRs that improves the detail in shadow and highlight areas of your image. It's particularly useful in scenarios where important parts of the subject are shadowed, people outdoors in full sun, for example. It's important to note, however, that if the active delighting setting is too high, more noise will be visible in the shadow areas of the image. To set the bracketing set to active delighting, we'll return to the custom settings menu, bracketing and flash, auto bracketing set, and we'll select ADL, or active delighting bracketing. The other thing that we'll need to look at in the menu system is the active delighting setting. That setting is located in the shooting menu. We'll select active delighting, and normal. We can choose to have up to five bracketed shots by pressing and holding the bracketing button while rotating the main command dial. If you choose two frames, the first shot will be taken with active delighting off, and the second shot will have the selected active delighting setting. If you choose three, four, or five frames, the first shot will have active delighting set to off, the second shot will be set at low, the third shot will be set at normal, the fourth shot will be set at high, and the fifth shot will be set at extra high. The D810 has a feature for creating multiple exposures, as well as a feature for interval timer photography. These features are great for creative and artistic shots, as well as for when you would like to document a specific series of events. First, we'll discuss the multiple exposure function on your camera. In film and digital photography alike, a multiple exposure is created when the film or image sensor is exposed two or more times to two or more different images. The final image has the additional image or images superimposed over the first. This photography technique is useful for creating artistic effect and is most commonly used when photographing fireworks, lightning, or superimposing a bright moon in a daylight scene. Let's walk through how to set up your D810 to shoot a multiple exposure image. First, you'll want to enter the shooting menu and select multiple exposure. Here, you can make adjustments to each of the three menu items. First, there is the multiple exposure mode setting. You can choose from off, on single photo, and on series. If you'd like to record just one multiple exposure image, you'll want to select on single photo. If you select on series, you can take consecutive multiple exposure images until you return to the multiple exposure mode menu and select off. For our purposes today, we'll select on single photo. Now let's look at the number of shots option. You can choose to have between 2 and 10 images superimposed by using the multi-selector. The bottom menu item is the auto gain option. The gain determines how much adjustment to exposure the camera makes for each exposure. If you want to have the same exposure value for each shot, auto gain should be set to on. When the auto gain is set to on, the camera will use the exact same exposure value and automatically divide that exposure based on the number of shots. For instance, if the number of shots is set to 3, the exposure adjustment would be one-third. Likewise, if the number of shots is 2, the exposure adjustment would be one-half. This way, when the exposures are combined into one image, the total exposure will be the equivalent of one proper exposure. There are times when you'll want to set the auto gain to off. If you're photographing subjects with a dark background, or if you want to manually control the exposure for each shot, the offsetting would work well. The other time that you would want the auto gain set to off is if you were using a technique called masking, where part of the lens is covered for the first shot, and then the opposite part of the lens is covered for the second shot. For these types of multiple exposure images, you would want each shot to have a full proper exposure. Another feature of the D810 is the interval timer. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset intervals, which can be minutes or hours. Photographers use this feature for documentary, scientific work, as well as artistic and creative purposes. The interval timer could be used for photographing anything from runners in a race to dramatic sunrise, sunsets, 
to creative self-portraits in studio. You'll probably get the best results using this function if the camera is on a tripod. To use this function on your camera, first make sure that you're not using the self timer or remote release modes and that the date and time have been accurately set on your camera. Then enter the shooting menu and select interval timer shooting. Under start options, you can choose to have the camera start shooting now or at a specific time. If now is chosen, the first shot will be taken about three seconds after the settings are completed. If you'd like shooting to begin at a specific time, highlight Start Time and use the multi-selector to select the hour and minute that you'd like shooting to begin. Note that the time in the interval timer uses 24-hour notation. The next step in setting up the interval timer for shooting is choosing the interval or the amount of time that you'd like to have pass between shots. Press the right arrow on the multi-selector to set the interval. Now you can set the hours, minutes, and seconds. If you're anticipating slow shutter speeds, you'll want to make sure that you choose an interval or time that is longer than the slowest shutter speed you expect the camera to use. When you're finished, press the OK button to continue. Now you'll need to choose the number of intervals as well as the number of shots that you'd like the camera to take at each interval. Again, simply use the multi-selector to make your selections. The option on the left side of the screen is the number of intervals or how many times that you'd like the camera to take pictures. Once that has been set, you can choose the number of shots you'd like the camera to take at each interval. When you have entered values for both of these settings, press the OK button to continue. The next setting is exposure smoothing. When enabled, exposure smoothing will allow the camera to adjust the exposure to match the previous shot. Note that when the shooting mode is set to manual, ISO auto must be enabled for the exposure smoothing to function properly. Now you're ready to have the camera start taking pictures. Highlight start and press OK. Note that while interval timer photography is in progress, you can freely play back and adjust menu settings, but the settings within the interval timer function cannot be changed while interval timer photography is in progress. Let's say that you'd like to pause the interval timer shooting. There are two ways that you can do this. First, you can enter the interval timer menu and select pause. The other way to pause interval timer shooting is to simply press the OK button. When you'd like shooting to resume, select interval timer shooting from the shooting menu and select restart. Another feature of the D810 is time-lapse. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset time intervals and then combine the images into a silent time-lapse movie. Note that the use of a tripod is recommended for time-lapse photography. To set up the camera to shoot a time-lapse sequence, enter the camera's shooting menu and select time-lapse photography. Here you can make adjustments to the interval, the shooting time, and the exposure smoothing. For interval, you can choose how long you'd like the camera to wait between shots. You can choose the hours, minutes, and seconds. If you're anticipating very slow shutter speeds, you'll want to make sure that the interval is longer than the slowest shutter speed. When you've made your selections, press OK. The next option is the shooting time. This is where you can choose how long you'd like the total time-lapse sequence to last. You can choose any length of time up to 7 hours and 59 minutes and press OK to confirm. The final option is exposure smoothing. Just like with interval timer shooting, the exposure smoothing for time-lapse photography will simply allow the camera to adjust the exposure to match the previous shot. After you've made your selections, highlight Start and press OK. If you want to end the time-lapse sequence before shooting is set to end, simply press the OK button. The camera will automatically combine the shots in the time-lapse sequence to create the time-lapse movie. To view the time-lapse movie, press the playback button and if necessary use the multi-selector to scroll to the time-lapse movie that you'd like to play and press the center multi-selector button to begin playback. In addition to capturing impressive high-resolution still images, the Nikon D810 can record full HD movies. 
Note that because the basic features of the camera's movie mode were covered in detail in QuickPro's original guide for the D810, we'll primarily be looking at more in-depth features and functions of the movie mode. Let's first take a look at the options for customizing many of the camera's movie mode functions. The customizable features are found in the Custom Setting menu, menu G, Movie. The first option is Assign Function Button. Just as with still shooting, you can set the function button to serve a specific role in movie mode. The first option is Power Aperture Open. When selected, this option will allow you to press and hold the function button to widen the aperture smoothly and quietly. The next option for customizing the function button in movie mode is index marking. With this option, you can press the function button to add an index marking at the current position. This can be especially useful when you're playing back or editing your movie files. The next option is view photo shooting info which will display the shutter speed, aperture, and other settings when the function button is pressed. To return to the standard movie recording display, press the function button a second time. The final option for customizing the function button is None. When this is selected, pressing the function button while in movie mode will have no effect. The next button that you can customize for the camera's movie mode is the Preview button. The first option for customizing the preview button is Power Aperture Close. You can use this feature in conjunction with the function button's Power Aperture Open option to have two button control of the aperture adjustment. Using these buttons to control the aperture setting while movie recording will improve the quality of the movie by minimizing camera shake and sound. The other options for customizing the preview button are index marking, and View Photo Shooting Info. Both of these options will operate in the same way as they would for the Function button. The next button that can be customized for movie shooting is the AEL-AFL button. The first two options for customizing this button are Index Marking and View Photo Shooting Info. When selected, these options will operate in the same way as they would for the Function button. The next option is AEAF Lock. This option will allow you to lock the focus and exposure when the AEL-AFL button is pressed and held down in the camera's movie mode. The next option is AE Lock Only, which will allow you to press and hold the AEL-AFL button to lock the exposure value. AE Lock Hold will also lock the exposure value, but when this option is selected, you will not need to hold the button down. Simply press the button once to lock the exposure, and then press the button a second time to release the exposure lock. Next, there is AF Lock Only, which will allow you to press and hold the AEL-AFL button and lock the focus. And if you select None, the AEL-AFL button will have no effect in the camera's movie mode. The final button that can be customized for use in the camera's movie mode is the shutter button. For this button, you can select one of two different options. First, you can select Take Photos. When this option is selected, pressing the shutter button completely during movie recording will end the movie recording and take a 16-9 aspect ratio still photo. The other option, Record Movies, will allow you to press the shutter button halfway to enter the movie live view when the Live View selector is set to Movie. Then you can press the shutter button completely to start or end movie recording. With Nikon's wide array of lenses, flash units, and other accessories like multi-power battery packs and GPS accessories, you'll be able to take amazing photos and further build your photography skills. Please note that using some third-party accessories, particularly flash units and multi-power packs, may cause damage to your camera and will void your Nikon warranty. You'll want to check with your authorized Nikon dealer or service representative for more information about the use of third-party accessories. Nikon has produced many lenses and types of lenses since they began producing film SLR cameras. 
Since 1959, Nikon lenses have been produced using the F mount, meaning that they will fit any Nikon body with the same style mount. However, there are a few things that are important to know and remember if you're considering using older style lenses on your Nikon D810. First, lenses that were produced prior to 1979, pre-AI lenses, will cause serious damage to your camera's mirror, so do not try to attach one of these lenses to your D810 body. If you have a question about a lens, refer to your camera's owner's manual for a complete list of incompatible lenses and accessories. Most lenses produced after 1979, or AI lenses, can be safely attached to your camera body. But these are the lenses that are non-CPU, meaning that they will not automatically have the ability to meter or communicate with the camera. They are also manual focus lenses. One of the benefits of the D810 camera is that you can input lens data for these lenses through the camera's menu system. Doing this will enable many of the features that are available on CPU lenses, most importantly including the matrix metering option. Lenses that were produced after 1986 are considered to be CPU lenses and are generally fully compatible with the D810 camera body. Most of them will autofocus and are capable of sharing important data with the camera body. A CPU lens can communicate with the camera body via these CPU contacts. These contacts will share a variety of information with the camera, including metering information as well as focusing distance. The lenses produced by Nikon today are CPU lenses and are identified as a type G or a type D lens. The G or D is shown on the lens barrel. The main difference between these two types of lenses is that the D lenses include an aperture ring like this, while the G lenses do not. Now that we've discussed a little about lens compatibility, let's discuss choosing a lens. With a wide variety of lenses in Nikon's current lineup, it can seem overwhelming to know what lens or lenses will help you with the type of photography that you're doing. One of the things that you'll need to consider when you're shopping for a Nikon lens for your D810 is whether the lens is FX or DX. FX lenses will allow you to use the entire area of the image sensor. DX lenses are fully compatible with the D810, but they will allow the camera to use a smaller area of the image sensor. Let's talk a little about lenses and apertures. When shopping for a lens, you'll notice that all lenses have a maximum aperture, or f-stop. Smaller numbers, like f1.4 or f2.8, are considered to be faster lenses because they allow a lot of light into the camera. If your lens has a range of apertures, note that the largest aperture can be used only at the widest focal length. This is how the aperture or aperture range is indicated on a lens barrel. The maximum aperture of the lens is important to keep in mind when you're shopping for a lens, especially if you're planning on doing photography in low light conditions, action or sports photography, or if you're looking to create photos with a very shallow depth of field. After the maximum aperture of the lens, the next thing that you'll need to consider is the focal length. Nikon lenses are available in a wide range of focal lengths, each with its own uses and benefits. The focal length on a lens is the first series of numbers on a lens barrel, and it's measured in millimeters. This lens, for instance, is a 24 to 120 millimeter lens, or the focal length range is from 24 millimeters to 120 millimeters. Lenses that have a range of focal lengths like this 24 to 120 millimeter are zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have the ability to get closer or farther away from the subject without ever actually moving the camera. Lenses that have only one focal length, like this 50mm 1.8 lens, are prime lenses. Prime lenses do not have zooming capability, but many professional photographers prefer them, particularly for portraits because of the great clarity they offer. With this understanding of focal lengths and millimeters, we can discuss some of the different ranges of focal lengths as well as the lens categories that different focal lengths fall into. Lenses that are less than 50 millimeters are considered to be wide-angle lenses. So the 24 to 120 that we just talked about could fall into the wide-angle range because it goes down to 24 millimeters. Wide-angle lenses are great for landscape shots as well as situations where space is limited and you want to include as much of a scene as possible. 
Mid-range lenses have between 50 and 85 millimeters. This range of focal lengths is great for family snapshots, portraits, and vacations. The 24 to 120 lens also falls into the mid-range category. These lenses are often referred to as walk-around lenses because they are so versatile and can be used for a variety of subjects and shooting scenarios. Telephoto lenses are lenses with over 85 millimeters and are great for getting closer to your subject. Sports and wildlife photographers use telephoto lenses extensively to zoom in on the subject. Telephoto lenses are also great for getting amazing close-up shots of flowers or other small objects. If you're photographing very small objects and you want to have the ability to capture even the smallest details, you want to look into a dedicated close-up or micro lens. The focal lengths for dedicated close-up lenses range between about 60 millimeters and 200 millimeters. In addition to apertures and focal lengths, there is one more important feature that you should consider when you're shopping for a Nikon lens, vibration reduction or VR. Vibration reduction will help you get sharp photos at slower shutter speeds. This feature is especially useful in low light conditions and can make the difference between a photo like this and a photo like this. Your D810 has many fully customizable settings and options. As we've discussed in chapters 1 and 4, you can customize the camera's buttons and dials, but you can also customize a wide variety of other camera functions to fit your personal preference. Let's take a look at some of the custom settings menus now. Press the menu button and navigate to the custom setting menu. At the top of that menu, there is a custom settings bank option. With all of the custom settings, you can save any changes that you make to one of four banks labeled A, B, C, or D. So the first thing that you want to do before making changes to the settings is select a bank. As you make adjustments and changes to custom settings, the changes will be automatically saved to the bank that you have selected. We'll just leave it on the default bank, A. Now let's take a look at the first custom setting menu, menu A, Auto Focus. The first two items in this menu are AFC and AFS priority selection. When you're shooting in the camera's AFC or AFS focus modes, you can choose what priority you would like to be given to focus of the image. For AFC or continuous servo AF, you can choose from release, release plus focus, and focus. If release is selected, the camera will allow the picture to be taken regardless of whether focus has been achieved. If you choose release plus focus, the camera will slow down during continuous shooting enough to get more shots in focus than it would with the release setting. The last option is focus. With this setting, the camera will not allow the picture to be taken if it's not in focus. For the AFS or single servo AF mode, you can choose from either release or focus. The next menu item in the auto focus custom menu is focus tracking with lock on. With this menu item, you can select how long the camera will wait to adjust the focus when the subject abruptly moves. This option prevents the camera from auto focusing on other objects passing through the frame when the camera is using focus tracking. You can select options from one short to five long. You can also select off, which will immediately adjust the camera's focus when the focusing distance changes. Next, there is AF activation. With this menu item, you can select whether you'd like to be able to use either the shutter button or the AF on button to activate the camera's autofocus. If you select shutter AF on, you can use either of those buttons to activate autofocus. If you choose AF on only, you'll only be able to use the AF on button to activate autofocus. The next option is focus point illumination with options for manual focus mode, dynamic area AF display, and group AF illumination. For manual focus mode, you can choose on or off. If on is selected, the active focus point will be displayed in the viewfinder in the manual focus mode. And if off is selected, the focus point will be displayed only during focus point selection. 
For dynamic area AF display, select on if you'd like to display the selected focus point as well as the surrounding focus points, and select off if you'd like to display only the selected focus point. For group area AF illumination, you can choose to have the AF points in the selected group displayed as small rectangles or as dots. Next, there is AF point illumination with options for auto, on, and off. If auto is selected, the active focus points in the viewfinder will be illuminated only when the subject is very dark. When on is selected, the active AF points will always be illuminated, and when off is selected, the active AF points won't be illuminated at all. Next, there is focus point wraparound. With this option, you can choose whether or not you'd like to be able to have the focus point selection wrap around from one side of the viewfinder to the other. If wrap is selected, you'll be able to continue scrolling when you reach any edge of the viewfinder, and the focus point will activate at the opposite side, top, or bottom. If no wrap is selected, scrolling will be disabled when you reach an edge of the frame. The next option is number of focus points which allows you to choose whether you'd like to use all 51 or just 11 AF points. Next, there is Store by Orientation. With this option, you can choose whether you'd like the camera to use separate focus points for portrait and landscape orientations. If you select Focus Point, you'll be able to choose a focus point when the camera is at a landscape orientation and a different focus point when the camera is rotated 90 degrees. If you choose focus point and AF area mode, you can enable separate selection of both the focus point and the AF area mode for the portrait and landscape orientations. Next, there is built-in AF assist illuminator. If on is selected, the AF illuminator will light under poor lighting conditions to help the camera find focus. Note that you must use the AFS focus mode in conjunction with the auto area AF mode or make sure the center focus point is selected for the AF illuminator to work properly. If off is selected, the AF illuminator will not work. The next option is limit AF area mode selection, where you can choose which AF area modes can be selected using the AF mode button and sub command dial in viewfinder photography. Next, there is autofocus mode restrictions with options for AFS, AFC, and no restrictions. If you choose either AFS or AFC, only that mode will be available in viewfinder photography. If you choose no restrictions, you can freely choose either of the AF modes. Now let's look at the options in the next custom setting menu, B, metering and exposure. The first menu item is ISO Sensitivity Step Value. This is where you can select the increment that is used when selecting the ISO. You can choose from one third step, one half step, and one full step. If you choose one third step, you'll have three times as many ISO settings to choose from than you would for the one step option. The next option is EV Steps for Exposure Control, which allows you to choose one third, one half, or one full step for the aperture, shutter speed, and auto bracketing exposure values. Again, choosing one third step will provide three times more exposure values to choose from than one full step. Next, there is exposure flash compensation step value. With this setting, you can choose to have the exposure and flash compensation values be one third, one half, or one full exposure step. The next menu item is Easy Exposure Compensation. With this option, you can choose whether you'd like to be able to adjust exposure compensation using only the command dials or with the command dials in conjunction with the Exposure Compensation button. If On Auto Reset is selected, you'll be able to adjust the exposure compensation using the command dials without the Exposure Compensation button. With this option, the exposure value will be reset when the camera or exposure meters turn off. The on setting is the same as on auto reset, except that the exposure compensation will not be reset when the camera or exposure meters turn off. If off is selected, the exposure compensation can be set only with the use of the exposure compensation button in conjunction with the main command dial. 
Next, there is matrix metering with options for face detection on and face detection off. When face detection on is selected, exposure will be automatically adjusted for the faces that are detected in the scene. The next item in the metering exposure custom setting menu is center weighted area. With this option, you can choose the diameter of the metering circle that is used when the camera uses center weighted metering. You can choose from 8 millimeters, 12 millimeters, 15 millimeters, 20 millimeters, or average. If average is selected, the entire frame will be averaged to calculate the exposure. The next menu item is fine tune optimal exposure. With this option, you can fine tune the level of exposure compensation you'd like to be automatically applied to your images for each of the metering modes. Note that for most scenarios, using standard exposure compensation methods is preferred and the fine tune optimal exposure option should only be used in special scenarios. The next custom setting menu is C, Timers and AE Lock. The first item is Shutter Release Button AEL. With this option, you can choose whether or not you'd like to lock the exposure when the shutter button is pressed halfway. If On is selected, the exposure will be locked when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The next menu item is Standby Timer. This is where you can set how long you'd like the camera exposure meters to remain active when the camera is not in use. You can choose from settings ranging from 4 seconds to 30 minutes, or you can select No Limit. Next, there is the Self Timer setting. With this option, you can make adjustments to all of the Self Timer settings, including the delay or how long the camera waits to take the picture after the shutter button is pressed. The number of shots, you can choose to have the camera take between 1 and 9 shots, and the interval, where you can choose how long the camera would wait between shots. The final item in the Timers and AE Lock custom setting menu is Monitor Off Delay, where you can choose how long you'd like the monitor to stay on when the camera is not in use. You can set a specific length of time for playback, menus, information display, image review, and live view. The next custom setting menu is D, Shooting and Display. The first menu item is Beep which allows you to select the volume and the pitch for the beep sound when the camera auto focuses or uses the self timer. Next, there is the CL mode shooting speed. This is where you can select the number of frames per second that you'd like the camera to record in the continuous low speed shooting mode. You can choose from between one and six frames per second. Next, there is maximum continuous release. In the continuous shooting release modes, the camera will continue taking pictures the entire time that the shutter button is held down completely. With this option, you can set the maximum number of shots that you'd like the camera to be able to take in a single burst. You can choose any number between 1 and 100. The next menu item is Exposure Delay Mode. There may be times when you're taking pictures with slow enough shutter speeds that pressing the shutter button to take the picture would result in a blurry image. With exposure delay mode, you can set the camera to have a brief delay after the shutter button is pressed before the picture is actually taken. You can choose from one, two, or three seconds for the delay. Next, there is electronic front curtain shutter. When enabled, electronic front curtain shutter will eliminate blur that is caused from the motion of the shutter when the mirror up release mode is used. Next, there is the File Number Sequence option, which allows you to choose the way that the camera assigns the numbered file names to the images. If On is selected, the camera will consecutively number image files, regardless of whether a memory card is formatted or a new memory card is inserted. If Off is selected, the file numbering will begin at 0001 when a new memory card or folder is used or when a memory card is formatted. The reset option will reset the file numbering for the on option. Next, there is the viewfinder grid display option, which will allow you to turn a framing grid in the viewfinder on or off. The next menu item is ISO display and adjustment with three options, show ISO sensitivity, show ISO easy ISO, 
and show frame count. If show ISO sensitivity or show ISO easy ISO is selected, the number of shots remaining on the control panel will be replaced with the current ISO setting. With the show ISO easy ISO, you can change the ISO setting by rotating one of the command dials, depending on the shooting mode. If show frame count is selected, the camera will simply display the number of shots remaining at its default location on the control panel. Next, there is the screen tips option, which can be set to on or off. When enabled, the screen tips can provide helpful information for items that are selected in the information display when the help button is pressed. Next, there is information display. With this menu item, you can make adjustments to the appearance of the information display. You can choose auto or you can choose manual. In manual, you can choose B, dark on light for black lettering, or W, light on dark for white lettering. The next item is LCD illumination. If on is selected, the control panel will be illuminated whenever the camera's exposure meters are active. If off is selected, the control panel will be illuminated only when the power switch is rotated to the light bulb icon. Next, there is MBD12 battery type. With this menu item, you can select the type of batteries that you're using with the optional battery pack. This will ensure that the camera functions as it's intended. The last menu item in shooting and displays is battery order. With this option, you can tell the camera which battery or batteries you'd like to use first when you're using an optional battery pack. The next custom setting menu is E, bracketing and flash. The first menu item is flash sync speed, where you can choose the maximum shutter speed that can be used with the built-in or an external flash unit. For the built-in flash, you can choose 1 320th of a second or 1 250th of a second. If you're using a compatible Nikon external flash unit, you can set the shutter speed to as fast as 1 8,000th of a second using the Auto FP option. For other external flash units, the fastest shutter speed that is available is 1 250th of a second. The next option is Flash Shutter Speed, where you can select the slowest shutter speed that can be used with the flash in the Program Auto or Aperture Priority shooting modes. Next, there is Flash Control for built-in flash. This option will allow you to choose from several different modes for the built-in flash including the sophisticated TTL mode, where the flash output is adjusted automatically depending on the lighting conditions. Manual, where you can manually set the flash power output. Repeating, where the flash will fire repeatedly while the shutter is open, creating a strobe-like effect. You can use this mode to take creative images that have a multiple exposure feel. The last option is Commander mode, which allows you to use the built-in flash as a master flash to wirelessly control one or more external Nikon speed lights. Next, there is exposure compensation for flash with options for entire frame and background only. When entire frame is selected, the flash level and the exposure compensation will both be adjusted to change the total exposure. When background only is selected, the exposure compensation will apply only to the background and the flash level will not be adjusted. The next menu item is Modeling Flash. When enabled, this option will allow you to press and hold the preview button when a flash is being used to see the effects of the lighting on a subject. The flash will fire continuously while the preview button is held down. The next menu item is Auto Bracketing Set, where you can choose what setting you'd like to have bracketed. This item is discussed in detail in Chapter 2 of this guide. Next, there is Auto Bracketing Mode M. With this menu item, you can choose bracketing options for the manual shooting mode. You can choose the way that the camera will bracket the flash, shutter speed, and aperture settings. The last menu item in the bracketing and flash custom setting menu is bracketing order. With this option, you can choose the order in which you'd like the camera to record bracketed shots. The first option, meter under over, will record the first shot at the standard exposure. The second shot will be underexposed, and the last shot will be overexposed. The other option will begin with the underexposed shot, then the standard exposure, and finally the overexposed shot. 
There are two other custom setting menus, F Controls and G Movie. The controls menus are discussed in detail in chapter one of this guide and the movie menus are discussed in detail in chapter four. Your Nikon D810 is a sophisticated camera and will need some basic care and maintenance to keep it in good working condition. Here are some tips for storing your camera. First, when the camera will be stored for long periods of time, keep the monitor cover in place. Also, remove the battery and use the battery cover. Next, make sure that the storage location is cool and dry and does not get exposed to temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid storing the camera in areas with high humidity, near televisions, radios, or other equipment that produce strong electromagnetic fields. When you're using the camera regularly, you want to protect it from several environmental elements that could cause damage. The camera should stay dry and contact with dust or sand should be avoided. You'll also want to avoid subjecting the camera to sudden changes in temperature. If the camera is cold and is suddenly brought into a warm environment, condensation or moisture can build up on the camera's internal components. Also, leaving the lens pointed at the sun will cause damage to the camera's image sensor. Finally, make sure that the camera is turned off before you remove the battery, memory card, change lenses, or attach any accessory to the accessory shoe. You'll want to consult your owner's manual for a complete list of care techniques and cautions. Let's talk a little now about ways to properly clean the camera without causing damage. To remove dust or lint from the camera body, a blower or brush is a good tool to have on hand. With either of these tools, you can also clean the lens, viewfinder, and mirror. To further clean the camera body, you can use a soft, dry cloth. Do not use alcohol or any other harsh chemicals. If the camera has been used at a beach, you can dampen a cloth with distilled water to clean the camera body. After the blower tool has been used to remove any dust and lint, you can use a soft cloth with a small amount of lens cleaner to gently clean the lens, monitor, and viewfinder. When you're using lens cleaner fluid, be sure to apply the fluid to the cloth and not to the camera or lens directly. Your D810 can be set to automatically clean the image sensor each time the camera is turned on or off. To do this, enter the camera's setup menu and select Clean Image Sensor. You can choose either Clean Now or clean it startup shutdown. If you select clean it startup shutdown, you'll need to also choose which option you'd like. You can choose startup, shutdown, or both. You can also choose to have the image sensor cleaning set to off. You can also clean the image sensor manually. Step-by-step -step instructions are available in your camera's owner's manual. When cleaning the image sensor, great care should be taken as damage to the image sensor or low pass filter can easily occur. QuickPro suggests that you contact a Nikon authorized service representative for assistance in cleaning the image sensor or other internal camera components. Nikon suggests that your camera be inspected every one to two years by the original retailer or a Nikon authorized service representative. Additionally, the camera should be serviced every three to five years by authorized Nikon service personnel. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Nikon D810. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Watch for more QuickPro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.